Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge and this video is a little bit different. We have been listening to our fans about the conversion corner videos and decided that what we're going to do is we're going to break them down into little sections and then when the whole project's finished we're going to cut them down as much as possible to make the videos even shorter. It just works out better for us being able to release a few videos at a time. And uh, so what we've got in this video is this is going to be the, the beginning of the project called the Typhonaut. The reason I'm building this is because in this edition with the Orcs, I can have feel no pain on pretty much all my army. And I've been trying to build a Nurgle army, or a Nurgle Orc army, for a very long time. I've got so many half-finished conversions, I decided to start finally working on my own project. But because it's my own project, it's going to have a lot of time and care put into it. Hence the video has been separated into parts because it's going to be really, really long. So, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at the parts from... This kit, and we're going to look at the parts from that kit. So we've got the Gorkonaut and the Glockin. Um, this should be really interesting. I'm going to build it as a Morkonaut because I want the force fields. Because the idea of my army is essentially to make my orcs as difficult to remove off the board as possible, and then use their overwhelming numbers and uh, vicious combat and strength to uh, just annihilate my enemies before they have time to remove too much off the board. So. What I'm going to do in this video right now is I'm going to take the two kits apart. I'm going to show you the design process, what I'm thinking of doing, and then what you'll see by the very, very end of the series, we will see how it went together, what changed and everything else. So I hope you do uh, like that idea and I do hope you stick around for this video and hopefully in the next three days, it should be in about three days because I'm going to be able to churn these out quite quick in small parts. We will have the the head design but this one is me basically just, i'm just going to talk about all the parts and what i intend to do design wise so without any more waffle let's crack on with the um, conversion so here we are having a good look at the parts guys and as you can see i'm just lining these up having a look at the size comparison of the two models and bizarrely they don't look it but they can be made to stand side by side and be about the same height so when I did the Nurgle Demon, I decided that uh, I'd start with the legs. On this one, I was started with the legs as well, but I think I want to raise these legs up a bit. That's going to be the design. I want to add these mechanical parts into this. It'd be a shame to lose that sigil of Nurgle there. So maybe I'll take that knee out and replace it with the cogs and cables from this and then start green stuffing it in. Uh, this is sort of the opposite of what we did with the uh, Nurgle Demon. This time it's going to be adding mechanical bits to flesh rather than adding flesh to mechanical bits. So as a template for the head, I just start looking at the Gorkonaut head and I realise very quickly I want the jaw, but these mechanical parts at the side, these big rivets, they connect perfectly to the jaw, so I don't want to lose those in the building process. This did in fact make the, the head sculpting and building very difficult to get the angles right and as you can see i'm just popping that on there as a, as a dry fit and trying to figure out at this point where i'm going with this because i could see it in my head what i want to build but i've not been able to actually get it there yet so it's a, there's a lot of experimenting what i like about this head from the glockkin is it does actually look kind of like a, a mutated orc head anyway so that's most of the work done for me but uh, it looks even more so when I finally do, in the next video, get round to getting all the jaw and everything built. And underneath here, I'm going to build um, some extra parts, like extra teeth and uh, a tongue, maybe. So this is the uh, right arm. So as you can tell, I've already decided which arm's going to have which weapon in it. And um, yeah, I can pretty much fit this gun. Is it the uh, zapper gun? I can't remember, I think it's a I think it's a blaster or a zapper, I can't remember the actual name of it at this point. But that's really irrelevant as what I realised is it fits in the Glockkin's arm if you take out the little mouth that goes on the inside. So what I can do here, and you can see me there scaling up the extra arm bits, because I, I can actually extend this arm now if I want to. As you can see, they almost fit perfectly in there, so with some filing and some green stuff, I could have that mutating 
out of the uh, Gorkonaut wrist bit uh, with the gun coming out of that obviously I'll be adding lots of extra detailing and stuff like that and uh, as I'm just showing you how these bits w should pop together uh, as a rough design, I'll also tell you that they're not actually Nurgle Orcs uh, before we start this series. They are a bunch of genetically deficient Orcs that are messed up and they've got the whole bunch of, whole bunch of fluff for them. Um, and they do kind of fall to Nurgle, but they, they don't. They are just genetically rotten. And uh, yeah, they have a pain boss instead of... Um, a war boss usually uh, but you never see him on the battlefield because games workshop gave everybody a six plus feel no pain on a uh, the snake bite clan so that works so he's off on somewhere else in the universe doing stuff while sending these weird creations out so that's just a little bit of background if you want to hear the whole fluff you guys let us know and i will end up writing it all down eventually it'll be quite long as well uh, it might be interesting to do that video so, we're on to the left arm, as I decided, the mechanical parts that go on the claw, they're going to work really well. But when you clip both of these together, they're a little bit bulky, so it's going to take some real crafting to like open up that arm detail. See, what I like about this arm is it still has that muscle on it, and that muscle texture. That's going to help add to the look for the orc, rather than it being a, a big machine, because basically this isn't... You know, a uh, Glockin or Gorkonaut. It's um, a swollen up, oversized orc because my pain boy likes to inject his boys with uh, very weird concoctions of uh, growth hormones and other random things, and he just hasn't got it quite right. So, this actually looks, because of the muscle structure on the top, I was checking it out. This actually looks like it'll weigh that down, but what I might do is a uh, twist the shoulder of that muscle around so I can get a better angle on that and bolt it through those rivets at the back there to where the elbow should be. Still not sure about this claw at the front as I, I could possibly use the claws from the uh, Glock King and, and the horns and turn those into some kind of hand which might be interesting instead but uh, we haven't got that round to doing that arm bit yet so we'll see how the rest goes. So what I started doing, because I was just comparing parts, I've started putting them all together here. And you can have a sneaky peek at what the head's going to look like when it's done. Although there's a lot more detail on it, you can see it there in the background. Um, it already looks pretty cool. But what, I wanna, what I'm thinking here is underneath the gut, because it is supposed to be a transport in-game. What it's going to have is some kind of... Um, not tunic, uh, loincloth made of mechanical bits and pieces that the orcs can open up and uh, run through. But these bits here from the Gorkonaut, they're too big. So I may actually have to extend the legs and the height of this, which I'm not too bothered about. The bulkier and scarier it looks, um, the better. I just want it to look like a huge rotten marauding orc. That uh, I'm going to possibly put it also in a pose so it looks like it's going to shoulder barge something because me and Andy were on about that it would look really cool if it looked like it was charging forward with its right shoulder forward about to like push a tank over or something and then dragging the claw behind it ready for a big swing also that section there I, was, I have contemplated putting that on top uh, I don't think that's actually going to happen but if I make a second one I'll start with that and then work around the other way but uh, the way this model goes together, it has no frame on the inside, so gluing it together and uh, converting this one has been a, a massive challenge. So I do need to extend those legs, and uh, un uh, what I'm showing you here is underneath there, I'm going to add bits of doors and stuff like that. So basically I'm going to make a smaller version of the Gorkonaut shield doors at that angle, put some chains on it, uh, random bits of detail from the uh, terrain box. So I've got loads of bits of vehicle. I'm going to bolt them all together so they look really cool. Like he's got some tunic, put some chains on. He's also going to have a chain around his neck with bells and things hanging off of it so he's making lots of noise. So I've sort of twisted both of those concepts together and um, that's basically my design and thought process uh, before I start this. So that's a bit of my thought process, a bit of a design process what we're potentially going to do during this series. Uh, there's a lot of work there to be done. I do hope you like the run through. Maybe it gave you some ideas for your conversions as well. 
I do have some thank yous to give out because uh, I can't do this without the help of our patrons who help support this channel a lot. Um, without you, uh, we would really, really struggle. So a big thank you to the Orc Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, Dwak, Mark, Dave, Tom R, and Spiky Dude. You guys are awesome. Your support helps pay for these models. Uh, and speaking of the cost of the model, you can always get it cheaper from the Outpost, which is what we do. We always order from these uh, other parties rather than Games Workshop. So follow the link in the description and you can get 15, 20% off all your hobby supplies, which meant this whole whole conversion only cost me like 120, I think, if that. It was much cheaper. Um, so go check them out. 15, 20% off every time you buy something from there after following that link. We get free store credit at no extra cost to you and we use that also for buying more models. So you can support the channel in many different ways. Obviously all the links for supporting our channel are in the description. And thank you very much for watching. I don't want to waffle on any further because now I'm going to go edit together how we're going to convert that head. So stay tuned for that and I'll catch you in the next one.